Welcome back to Salam Britain. We hope you are enjoying your morning with us so far. I'm definitely enjoying my morning <laughs> with my too. beautiful co-host, oh, Mars. I'm looking forward to some peanuts later on. Now, our first guest is Zohair Girash, the founder of Afia Healing, who holds qualifications as a clinical psychohypnotherapist, counsellor and hijama therapist. Through his extensive experience, Zahir delivers transformative workshops and seminars on various aspects of healing, mental health and overall well-being. Today, as we observe Mental Health Awareness Week, we will dive into Zahir's expertise in alternative healing modalities that address both physical and emotional issues. Indeed. So join us as we explore the vital topic of mental health and gain valuable insights from the remarkable Zahir Giraj. Assalamu alaikum, Zahir. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing? It's our pleasure to have you uh, in our show. Mashallah. As always, of course. Good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Zahir, uh, Mental Health Awareness Week serves as a crucial reminder to prioritize mental well being. From your perspective, why is it important for society to raise awareness about mental health and what role does alternative healing play in this context? Mm, good question. Okay, big question. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Salatu wassalamu ala ashraf al-anbiya al-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So Mental Health Awareness Week, alhamdulillah, is here and mashallah, it gives us the opportunity to really bring forth the discussion, the conversation, the opportunity to use these platforms, inshallah, to connect with wider audiences that are struggling with mental health issues such as sadness, low mood, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, any of these low, low key, low level issues that are prevalent in our society. And it just feels for most people that with the amount of stress and responsibility that is already on our shoulders, that this is just a part and parcel of our life and that we just have to learn how to live with it, not understanding the long-term consequences of such behaviors and such pressures on our lives. And so through these discussions, through these awareness programs, um, people can really start to understand that actually, you know what, this stressful living, stressful life is actually a choice. And that there are ways of managing that stress. There's ways of de-escalating that stress and also ensuring that this level of stress doesn't become chronic because ultimately chronic stress leads to all forms of inflammation in our bodies. And that inflammation ultimately then results in some form of disease manifestation uh, in, in the system. So what we're trying to do really over here is, is allow people to understand that, you know, everything has a consequence. And again, you know, from our dean, we learn that even when we are, you know, we don't we don't take small sins lightly. Why? Because in the end, they do add up and they become big sins. So in the same way, you're saving a penny every day in time, inshallah, it'll be um, a bigger amount that, you know, will, will amount to something. So in the same way, we have to take our health and our well-being in, in the same light um, and make sure that it doesn't overwhelm us later on in life. Mm, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely, because um, actually, my, this is a bit of an extra question, um, brother. Is it too late? You know, when you've been a stress head for a, such a long time and suddenly you realize, OK, I, I need to do something about it. Is it too late or is, it will, will there always be time to heal yourself? Oh, absolutely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us time over and over again. Every day is a new chance to start again. And this is why we find, you see, when, when we find um, patients and we hear, you know, people who've had like last stages of cancer and suddenly they have a turnaround. Mm. But when you look at their lives, what actually happened? They had a realization. I've lived my life in a particular way. I've held on yeah. to certain emotions, feelings, hurt and guilt and shame and all of these things. And at some point they decide in their mind and through their body, Ya Allah, I let this go now. Okay. And the moment that happens, you, you see that this person goes into remission and then Alhamdulillah, they get completely cured. So in that sense, there is never, um, we should never lose hope. Allah is telling us all the time, La taqnatu min rahmatillah, that don't give up hope in the mercy of Allah. Mm -hmm. Because he's always there, regardless of what it is, regardless of how, how far we've gone. And this is another, you know, um, mental health issue that Muslims generally tend to have, um, is one of belief, okay, that... I've gone so far from Allah that I don't think there is a way back. Okay. And we need to understand and we need to keep reminding ourselves that regardless of how far you've gone away from Allah, Allah is only one turn away. Okay. Astaghfirullah ya Rabbi min kulli dhamb. 
And, and now I turn back to you. And that's it. And Allah is there wherever you are. Okay, Allah says, I am with you wherever you may be. So, and Allah always asks us, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where are you going? Okay, so, and 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 when you are afflicted, okay, with, with any ailment and any physical disability, this is just an, a calling to you to say, hey, slow down. Mm -hmm. Just reassess your life. Think about what's important. Okay, because a lot of people that, that find themselves in the midst of, uh, you know, ailments and disease and all the rest of it, um, usually seem to have a big shakeup and say, okay, how have I actually spent my life? What have I done? Who have I neglected? Mm -hmm. Who have I been running after? And who should I have been running after? And Alhamdulillah, even in the midst of your troubles and your worries and your down days, it is still covered with Allah's mercy. So it's a matter of us just connecting to that. And when we connect to it, Alhamdulillah, there's a way out. And again, remember our dua, Ya Allah, I need help in this. Ya Allah, there's no one else I turn to. I turn to you. you this is in your control. Make it happen. Yeah. Ya Rab. Indeed, so we can say, brother Zahir, that maybe it can take um, <clears throat> a little bit of time, but it's never late and never say never, right? No. Mm -hmm. You, It's yeah. just going to take a little bit time. And as you mentioned, the fact that whoever is facing mental health problems, just keep faith to Allah that everything is going to be okay mm -hmm. one day. And um, there is a uh, beautiful uh, hadith could see if I, if maybe I'm wrong, uh, Brother Zahir, you can, you can uh, complete me in my sentence that whoever goes to Allah by walking, he will go to them uh, by running and whoever running. go. So whoever, it's like in our hand, if we really want to be healed, Mm -hmm. then uh, Allah is there. We just need to ask this from him and yeah. mm -hmm. he's going to help. Yeah, and, and Allah tells us, you, Allah does not change a people until they change themselves. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is it. So we can talk about mental health and all the rest of it, but until we don't start to put those changes in effect in our own lives, then the change is not going to happen. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's no point just sitting on the musalla <clears throat> making dua. That is only one part of it. But beyond the dua, the dua needs to be converted into an action plan. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Allah, I need to be healthy. Okay, now what are you going to do about it? Okay, yeah. so I need tawfiq, I need to exercise, I need to eat healthy, I need to sleep yeah. on time, I need to True. cut down my phone time. All of these things are now starting to contribute towards your healing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times we do, I do see, and you know, I see myself as well, is we spend decades getting ourselves into the position we are now of being sick and overweight and tired and brain fogged and all that. Mm -hmm. But then you have to give yourself some time, okay, to get well, like you said, Lulu. And in that, we, we you know, it, it can take months, it can take a few years. Yeah. And, you know, we, we learned from the story of Ayub, alayhi salam, when he was afflicted okay. with, with illness in his body for 84 years, oh. okay? And at that age, he was 84-ish. And his wife said to him, um, why don't you ask Allah to cure you? And he got so angry. He said, Allah gave me health for 84 years. I've only been sick for 12 yeah. Right. So I feel ashamed that, you know, um, of, of asking my Rabb, but, you know, we don't have the patience of the prophets. Yeah. So the moment we sneeze, we start asking Allah for help. And, and that's how it should be. We just have to um, express our weakness and vulnerability in front of Allah because we don't want to do that in front of anyone else. So true. Mm. Indeed. Alhamdulillah that we are Muslims and we have the best example in our prophets. Sometimes it gets Alhamdulillah. hard, mm. but we always have to uh, turn our head back and see and um, uh, meditate about their own yeah. uh, mm. tests that Allah um, made for them. Okay. But yeah. Zuhair, in your workshops and seminars, you cover a wide range of disciplines related to healing, mental health and well-being. Uh, how do you determine which areas to focus on and what factors do you consider when uh, uh, tailoring your approach for different individuals? Well, as I've been delivering uh, my workshops for about 14 years now, um, you know, after every workshop, you get feedback. And after every workshop and feedback, you sort of see what's working with you with certain types of people and in also certain locations. So sometimes if I'm teaching locally, uh, meaning in person, then um, each workshop is, is tailored to that city ultimately um, because cultural mindsets and uh, everything else that comes with it is very much geared and focused towards serving the needs of that community. Now that Alhamdulillah, since uh, lockdown, everything has moved online. Um, now it's it's about balancing the needs that are presented and the people that are joining us globally from around the world. 
So within that, um, there are some basic concepts. The first one really um, of the workshop that I teach is dealing with pain. Okay, so pain management is extremely important. And a lot of the time, pain can actually be dealt with through mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And we find that a lot of mindfulness exercises are, are utilized when trying to break down this aspect of um, chronic pain. And after that, the other half of my workshop is really focused on understanding the emotional impacts of, um, of, of what we carry within ourselves on our health and well-being. So the second part of my workshop really is about digging in. And I find that the emotional part of the workshop, um, and generally when working with clients on a one-to-one -one basis as well, is that the emotions form the bulk of the iceberg. The physical pain usually is the tip of the iceberg. So 10 to 20% on top, 80 to 90% lies below the surface, which people don't see. And Alhamdulillah, through these years of experience and uh, the insights that we have and the, and the experience that we build up, we're able to identify then very easily and quickly what exactly is going on and why the body is manifesting these problems in the way that it is. Mm. Subhanallah, mm. Allah has created a beautiful relationship between mental yes. and the body reacts the physical, from yes. the inside pain that yeah. people feel like you can get sick mm. or uh, you faint or like the mental is the mental health is so important and it's so beautiful how the body reacts that's mm. why we always say that we have to listen to our bodies sometimes. absolutely absolutely my my question actually is um about your career because throughout your career you've helped a lot of individuals overcome various challenges can you share a memorable success story that highlights the transformative power of alternative healing and also the positive impact it had on someone's mental health journey okay so story that's a bit yeah tight isn't I'm it sure so stories so yeah so I'll, 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 I'll direct you towards our uh, I'll direct you towards our, our uh, testimonials page. But Alhamdulillah, we get uh, clients coming to us with chronic baggage. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of the times that I think what, what I'm usually affected by the most personally um, are stories of grief where people have held on to the pain of lost loved ones mm -hmm. um, for like decades. Okay. Not just uh, 10 years, 20 years. Um, the one, one, one that really hits me now that I'm thinking about is I had an elderly gentleman in one of my workshops and he was 65 and uh, he was just grumpy sitting at the back. And I said, uncle, are you okay? Who brought you? It was my wife, right? So he'd been forced in, right? And he didn't need to be there. But when we did the um, emotional release exercise, I didn't even ask him. I just said, how old were you when that thing happened? And he said, five. Oh, wow. I was five years old, right? Oh, so wow. I went through a session so 60 years has been holding on to that uh, fear, the pain, the loss, all of this stuff he's been holding on. I did a session with him and in about 10 minutes, he started shivering and, you know, he was going into a state and I calmed him down again and allowed him to breathe, brought him back. And then suddenly he was fine. At the end of the workshop, I went to him, I said, are you okay? What happened? He goes, you know, it. I was five years old when my mother was shot in front of me. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, there was a there was a kidnapping, hijacking, and in that his his mother got shot, right? And he goes, since then I've been holding this on, and now I just feel free. Wow. Okay, and subhanallah, when you see stories like that, um, and and another similar story, another uh, uh, brother of ours, he also witnessed his mother passing away when he was fifteen years old. He's forty five, and he says, I've been holding this pain on. Wherever I close my eyes, I see myself just crying over my mother. Mm. And alhamdulillah, 10 minutes later, he goes, I'm actually away from that now. I don't see that scene now. I just <clears> see <throat> good memories of my childhood. So those are grief-related issues. Then we move on, alhamdulillah, to, um, you know, where sisters have not been able to conceive. Why? Because of trauma that is held in the system. Um, and alhamdulillah, after that, you know, about a couple of years later, um, I met the sister and she goes, here's our baby. Oh. Okay. <laughs> like, mashallah. <laughs> so... It's, 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 it's consistent, alhamdulillah. And these are just my experiences. But then, alhamdulillah, we have our whole band of practitioners working globally. And mashallah, even, you know, their impact on, on the community and their, you know, yeah. circles, mashallah, has been significant. So we make shukr to Allah for these um, moments that he has granted us to be of use to mankind. Okay. And an amazing thing is that, you know, when, when, 
when Allah gives you the tawfiq to help people, then that is also the the calling that Allah is willing to help you as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's 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 all part and parcel. We have to work together with it, inshallah. Mm. I was having goosebumps when <clears throat> yeah. he said five years old. I know. It's like five years, trauma yes. is very it it depends how hard it hits you. Yeah. But sometimes, brothers Zuhair, I feel like there are people that they get along with the pain and then yeah. maybe something else happens and they go back again in their trauma. Yes. Yeah. Maybe I'm yeah. wrong, but sometimes yeah. or when you feel weak, you have another test that it takes you back. It takes that. you yeah. back, yeah. yeah. And maybe the second so this time is the problem, that you yeah. go back, uh, you experience, your experience is even worse than the first time. Mm. And also, yeah, so not to mention the fact, uh, sorry for cutting you, not to yeah, mention no the fact that when you are old, it's even worse. Mm. Yeah, so this is what happens is we have a traumatic event in our lives and we don't deal with it. We cut it off, mm. we put it under the carpet, mm, we shove it in the yes. back of our minds and we'll say we'll deal with it later. So then you go off in life, another four or five years pass, and something else happens, it adds to that, and then it adds to that, and it adds to that. So the reality is that you never dealt with it in the first place. And so all it's doing is that it's waiting in the background for you to address it, for you to deal with mm. it. But it never gets addressed. It doesn't get addressed. So eventually, whenever you are triggered, whenever another story like that comes up for you, you get triggered internally. Those memories will flood back. So when we work with our clients, what we're trying to do is trying to find the point at where it all started. Now, normally what tends to happen is, oh, you know, I had an accident last week. Okay, but that's not the issue, okay? There was an accident that happened two years ago. There was an accident that happened five years ago. So we need to keep going back and understanding what is the pattern of behavior that your body manifests since you were a child. Mm -hmm. And then you will find out that, okay, we have this issue. And even yesterday I was working with, with a brother um, and, you know, his mother is, you know, towards the end of her life. And he goes, you know, I have this sense of guilt around her and, you know, that I can't be with her and I can't do anything for her. And I said, OK, that's fine. But rather than having that guilt, you know, you have the opportunity for khidma that you can be there for her. But what transpired again with him was when he was six years old and he was out with his mother, his mother collapsed and she, she had a heart attack and then she was taken to hospital. So as a six-year-old child who doesn't know what's going on, who is shocked, he feels that what's happened to mom is my fault and that mm -hmm. I have to care for her. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. No. So we don't get to understand these things. We don't get to explain these things to children because we're just trying to run with the moment. But then when we started to break this down and, and sort of reverse understand this process, he said, actually, yeah. He said, that's what's happening is I am recalling those memories that are stuck in my subconscious mind as a child. And I'm superimposing them to situations that are happening today. So rather than making myself useful and making myself productive, I'm still in that in that mode of fear. And that's what doesn't help. And this is why when we have to go through the process of healing, we really need to understand what exactly is driving and governing your behavior. Mm -hmm. Once we can identify that, then mashallah, you become detached. It's like letting go of the chains that you've been tied up with. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm kind of like all for one for like alternative, um, you know, alternative ways to to heal, um, you know, like a bit of CBT, um, even EMDR and all of those kinds of yeah. things, because I think those things are quite empowering. Absolutely. When, when you recognize that there is an issue or like, you know, or you think like I can't quite cope with certain things, yeah. you kind of need to find ways to be able to kind of like go, okay, you know, let's, let's just be a bit more kind of practical about yeah. this. Yeah. How can you help yourself? Because if you can't help yourself, you're not going to be able to yeah help others yeah um I, i'd love to know as well like so the past year has been particularly challenging for many in terms of mental health due to the pandemic so how has um afia healing adapted its services to meet the evolving needs of individuals um during during those unprecedented times yeah so i mean the first thing that we had to do was move online and uh mm -hmm. you know not have to see people in person and and the beauty of afia healing is because it's it's talk based an energy-based work, then we don't need to have physical contact with the client. So it's simply just, you know, talking to the client and facilitating a process for them. And with that, um, you know, with the, with the pandemic and everything else that has been thrown out as a result of it, we're, we're having to really 
put out those fires that were lit in place, okay? And, and you know, through everything else that happened, um, we, we are having to address far more complications. Um, one of them is fear-based, okay? Because a lot of fear was induced into people during those times. And then also the fallout from the vaccinations and everything else that people have had and, and developed certain symptoms and, you know, extra um, issues in, in their lives, that all needs to be addressed. And so, again, this is the interesting thing, is that a lot of people got vaccinated, but some showed the um, extra sort of um, symptoms, basically. And what we need to understand is why is it only some? And when we start looking at the histories of these people, they already brought to the table a lot of emotional baggage. Mm -hmm. And that then was just amplified a little bit after they went through those processes. So again, for us, it's, it's, it's been a sharp learning curve of understanding what impact the vaccinations have had, the, what the lockdown has had, the impact of the lockdown on children, on their mental health, on, yeah. on the impact of wearing face masks, okay? Now, oh, yeah. one of the most important things for children is recognition, okay? A child will observe all the time. The child is simply observing. And for the most part, for most young babies that were born in those two years, did not see the full face of their parents, for example, okay, or of their loved ones or their primary caregivers. All they saw was two eyes and then this blue thing in front of their mouth. So a lot of this, you know, development of the prefrontal cortex hasn't happened. And we will only be able to tell in time in a few years down the line to say, hey, what was the impact of the child not recognizing the parents fully? Mm -hmm. And that's something that we'll deal with as it happens, inshallah. But we pray that Allah allows a smooth transition out of it. Inshallah. And I hope that um, they will not have any more trauma from this pandemic. Inshallah. Because you never know in the future what can uh, what can happen. But so here we are uh, finishing this segment. Unfortunately, we would love to know uh, from you what message would you like to share with our viewers regarding the importance of mental health awareness and the potential of uh, alternative healing modalities to transform lives. Well, my calling today would be that, you know, use this week as a springboard of making a commitment to learn about mental health and then, you know, enroll yourself on programs that are teaching about this. Alhamdulillah, with Afia Healing, like I said, we've been here for 14 years and we've got programs running all the time. Come and join, you know, connect with me on social media and um, see what we can do for you, you know, and, and there's so many varieties and options out there on the market, either in person, online courses, that you can actually start to learn these techniques because there is every because everyone knows someone in your street, in your home that needs assistance in this arena. So if you can, inshallah, please commit yourself and, and just bring yourself out. And if you think that you've got the capability and the ability to be calm and compassionate and considerate and loving and sharing towards one another, then inshallah, you know, take this uh, course of action and um, and allow you know for that for that uh, kindness to spread amongst our ummah, inshallah. Indeed, inshallah. inshallah. And not to forget that um, mental health is as much important as the physical health. Absolutely. Don't ignore Absolutely. your mental health. Uh, keep saying to yourself, it's going to be good. Of course, it's going to be good, but maybe you need more. You need to do something mm -hmm. so you can uh, cure and heal yourself. But Zuhair, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure, Shukran. as always, having you on Salam Britain. And looking forward to next time. Inshallah. Salam alaikum. An amazing topic, alaykum. inshallah. Salam. Well, now it's time for another commercial break. So don't go anywhere, though. 